So um, like I told you earlier, everything that you need to succeed is within reach. Just if you don't, if you don't understand something today, if it seems like confusing, um, know that that's totally okay. And that's kind of how business plans were typically made um, to be this really cold, um, factual piece of information that's hard to digest. Um, and so um, I want to let you know that it's just you can succeed, even if it does seem overwhelming. Um, and we're here to help you. All right. So power in the pause. Lo always says this. I will never take credit for it. It's such a brilliant um, piece of advice to give you because I want to take a pause before we get started today. Um, like I said, take out your pen and your notebook. And I want you to set your intentions. What is it that you really want to get out of today? What is it that if you learned this, it would help you move the needle forward? Set your intentions very, very clearly. Whatever that is for you, it's completely okay. I want you to secondly, identify your limiting beliefs. Write them down. What is the thing that's holding you back in your brain? What's the thing in your brain that you think is holding you back? So set your intentions, identify your limiting beliefs, and visualize your highest self is number three. That's the most important one. I want you to visualize you already being this massively successful, whatever success means for you, business owner. I want you to imagine whatever it is for you um, that means that you have succeeded. What is your highest self? How is she showing up? Today, I, when I was getting ready for all of you ladies, I was putting my makeup on, I put my best perfume on. I was trying to really hone into who is my highest self and how do I show up as her so I can show up for all of you at the end of the day. Showing up as your highest self is not a selfish thing to do. It's selfish to not show up as your highest self because you're not giving your full potential to the world. Okay. All righty. Those are a lot of big, deep questions, but like I said, we have a lot to go over today. So you can write these prompts down and maybe come back and revisit them later if you need to. All righty. This is another deep, um, uh, deep belief that I have before you go into building a business plan. Whenever you're building a business plan, we automatically switch gears from thinking about ourselves and what makes us tick into what makes our business tick, which is both equally as important. Whenever I work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, which all are getting like a crash course into like a one-on-one -on -one like session with me, <clears throat> I always start with identifying your core values because this is one of the things that changed my life. Whenever I was working in um, corporate America, I was um, where I thought my highest self was, where I thought I always wanted to be, what I thought what most success looked like. And what I realized one day is that I was deeply depressed. I wasn't happy. On the outside, it looked like I was living my highest self to everybody else's expectations. But for me, it wasn't aligned. Whenever I was able to pause and identify what my actual core values, what was most important to me outside of business, outside of my profession, outside of my career, it wasn't aligned. And I knew that a massive change needed to happen. <clears throat> so for you, as we get started in building your business plan, and if you haven't gone into building a business plan ever before, this is one of the first things to kind of check off the list. Sit with yourself and ask yourself, what is most important to me? What makes me happiest? What do I need in my life to feel successful? For me, that was being around my family, starting a family one day, being there, was being able to travel. I wanted the flexibility and the freedom to travel when I wanted, where I wanted, as often as I wanted. I needed to feel creative. I needed to feel creatively challenged in what I was doing. Realized that was really important to me whenever I wasn't 
doing something that was creatively challenging for me, I didn't feel good. It just felt like I was in a box, felt like I was like getting pushed down and not being able to be set free to be who I actually wanted to be and do what I actually wanted to do. So before you go to start a business, you need to identify what's most important to you because once you're building your business, you can ask yourself, is this aligned? If you're going to go through <laughs> the, the fight to, to have a really successful business, you want to make sure first that it's something that you're really passionate about. And then that makes you tick and makes you light up at the end of the day, whatever that is for you. Um, if y'all feel comfortable, would love to have you put in the chat box what your core values are. One, two of them, all of them, because it could inspire somebody else. Um, I think a lot of people struggle with this one, trying to identify what actually makes them tick because we get so caught up in the busy busyness of life. Um, but sometimes just like I shared, like my three ones that really helped me, um, maybe yours could help somebody else, um, as well. Cool. Um, anybody, uh, feeling, uh, feeling good, feeling good here, feeling like, um, we're understanding, we're getting started. All we right. Have a question. Um, yeah. So someone asked, you're speaking about core values. What about business core values? Mm, yeah, really important too, right? So whenever you are starting your business, I always like to say, like, pull yourself out of the business first, right? You can get, you're going to get into the business's core values and the mission and the vision and all of those things, which we're about to talk about. But if you dive into the business's core values before you dive into yours and you're going to be running this ship, you're going to be steering this ship, you better make sure those are aligned first. Because if you dive into all of the business stuff before you dive into that, um, you might get lost um, along your journey a little bit easier. I've seen it happen too many times. All righty. Um, so I want to talk about what is a business plan and what is their purpose? So business plans are essentially kind of, so see, that's another oops, change that I um, business plans are essentially kind of the the roadmap and the blueprint for what your business is going to be, what it stands for, your objectives and your tactics um, of how you're going to achieve them, as well as kind of that financial element too. Business plans can be used in so many different ways depending on what your business is and what you're trying to accomplish. So depending if you're trying to build a business plan because you need funding for your big, big idea that you need to put out into the world, you're going to have one type of business plan. Maybe you're just a solopreneur. You're just trying to, you know, have your services um, interact with um, your ideal client. You can build your business plan for you too. Um, and it can be a little less rigid and structured than a typical business plan. But you still wouldn't go through all of the like prompts that a typical business plan has because it can set you up for success um, and give you a step-by-step -step, um, execution plan along the way too that you can think through step-by-step. -step. So um, you can use them in various different ways, whether that's just understanding your marketing strategies, whether that's setting yourself up to get that funding from a bank or a VC or angel investor, um, whatever that is for you. Um, but that's typically what their purpose is um, for clarity and to help you actually execute your business. So let's go into all of the elements of an actual business plan. So this is where your business plan starts. It starts first and foremost with an executive summary. Sometimes you can come back to this if you need to fill out all of the elements of your business plan first, um, but this is where it would start. Um, we want to provide a summary on what your business is and some background of your history and why you are qualified to start or run this business or why you're going to build a team of people around you that are qualified to start and run this business. So who is it set up? When was it set up? Why was it set up? What exactly does your business offer and who does it offer it to, right? That ideal customer, that ideal audience. Um, 
who are the other people in your business besides yourself, that team that you're building around you? Um, <clears throat> how do you have any like um, points of why you've been successful so far and why you're qualified to run this business? Or are you struggling in some areas currently and this is why you need the funding to start this business? How viable is it? Identifying that there's a market, that there's a need for this um, is what you would all include in your executive summary. The executive summary is essentially all of the detailed elements of your business plan broken down. So although it's like the first thing, ideally, like in a typical business plan, you can come back to it at the end after you've kind of worked through all of those core elements of building it. Um, <clears throat> identifying what the specific purpose of the plan is, like we just talked about, whether it's to secure investors, set strategies, et cetera, can help you put that executive summary into place. Know who you're talking to. Are you talking to yourself? Are you talking to an investor? Are you talking to a potential business partner um, that could just read the executive summary and get a pretty good idea? The second thing I think is one of the um, most uh, crucial elements of a business plan. This one and the next slide is the mission and the vision of the company. What people really want to understand, what you really want to understand to give you that clarity is the mission behind why you're doing what you're doing. What impact do you want your business to have is a great way to kind of boil this down into the mission. You hear all the time of these like mission-driven companies, um, and that's what keeps them going, that would be what your mission could be. So I wanted to give you some examples because I get a lot of questions on what the mission should be. I looked up what are some of the best mission statements on Google, right? And these are some of them that are boiled down to really easy to understand. JetBlue mission statement to inspire humanity, both in the air and on the ground. Right? You kind of understand what's driving them to make the decisions for their business. Tesla, to accelerate the world's tran <clears throat> transition to sustainability, sustainable energy. Okay, makes sense. Ted, spread ideas. That simple, literally two words. You don't have to think too much into this. LinkedIn, to connect the world's professionals to make them more productive and successful right? They're not telling you all their offers. They're not telling you exactly how they do it. It's not this big drawn out thing. It's a mission that can drive their leaders of the company. It's a, it's a mission that can drive their team, right? Um, is that making sense to everybody? Yeah? Cool. Awesome. All right. So the mission, really, really important. It's typically in, a, in like a document um, business plan, the executive summary, your mission, and the vision, which is what we're going to go over next, are all going to be on that front page. So the vision. So the mission and vision, you can kind of get confused of how are they different, Priscilla, right? So we just went over the mission. Whenever you think about the vision, it's where you want your business to go. Like, where is that like ideal high point that you want to be, right? We're not there yet. But this is where we really want to be. If you were pitching to like investors, you would say, this is the goal of what we're trying to reach, right? And this is why we kind of need your money to reach that, <laughs> essentially. For you, it's giving you that clarity to build your roadmap for success of like, this is, now I know where I'm trying to go. If you've attended one of our other workshops of the, of the Fiji moment of what, where is it that you really want to take, like, ultimately be if your business was like your dreamiest vacation that's your vision it's your guiding light of like i'm getting there i'm getting there i'm getting there this is exactly where we want to be um so think about your vision of your brand what are the overall aim and the vision of your business in years to come months to come maybe right whatever your timeline looks like The next thing that, I, that is included in your business plan and you should really do as you're getting started building your business 
is a SWOT analysis. If you don't know what a SWOT analysis is, it's identifying kind of your um, what your market looks like and your core competitors in the space. I don't like to focus too much on core competitors like throughout the ins and outs of the every day of your business, but really focusing in at one point to understand who else is out there doing what you kind of do, what are they doing well, and what are some opportunities in the space. So SWAT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I like to say list out maybe like five to 10 companies or five to 10 businesses that are doing something similar um, in your industry. Who is a competitor, Priscilla? A competitor is somebody that your ideal audience would maybe go to instead of you um, to spend their money is how I look at competitors. If somebody would, is looking at me and, and another coach um, and could potentially go with the other coach to give them their money, then they're probably one of my competitors, I would say. Let's identify what are they doing really well? What are some things that I noticed that are weaknesses in their business that they're not doing just from the outside? What's an opportunity that I can come in and do something that they're not doing that could benefit my customer at the end of the day? And what are some threats that they're doing really, really well maybe and um, that could hinder me getting their business, their, our customer's business over them? So meaning that maybe they're located, you know, in a, in a specific area that's better. And that's a, that's a really big threat to me. Um, they have a larger audience and that's a big threat. Um, maybe they have, uh, you know, um, a celebrity endorsement and that's a big threat. How could I maybe limit some of those threats for my business? You don't wanna just do the SWOT analysis and walk away. The important part of this is identifying actions that you can take in order to kind of answer what's in that SWOT analysis. So using it to highlight the key actions you need to match up with your competitor's strengths. Um, of course, you're not <laughs> gonna like plagiarize their business. You're not gonna just copy and paste their services over to yours, but use them as inspiration of what you can do um, and think creatively on how you can answer to that market. All right. So secondly, you need to identify who your target audience is. This is a big thing in your business plan that is crucial because it's going to help you um, build out your financials. It's going to help you build out your marketing plan. It's going to help you in a lot of different areas. This is hard to do at the beginning, especially if you're just getting started because you're not sure. You think you know who your ideal audience is, but you're not sure if they're actually your ideal audience. This happened to us whenever we first started Forward Female. And know that you just have to start somewhere. Really think about who needs your services, who needs what it is that you're trying to accomplish, and um, try to like get in their psyche almost to where you can visualize who they are. Think about what is their age range? What do they care about? Where are they typically hanging out? And that can be like in real life or where are they typically hanging out online? Are they on like, are they the Instagram, like, um, you know, swiper? Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Pinterest, right? Um, how much money do they make, right? That's a big one. Do they have the disposable income maybe to, to buy your service? Do they, um, uh, is, would your product, would your service be in their budget? We got to identify who they are. Um, and how, when, where maybe do the people that make that much money, where do they hang out? Would be another question that I would ask myself. How big is their market? How big is, all of those things that you just mentioned. Is it a big, big market? Is there a super, super niche market that you gotta find your way into? What is it? But I deeply explore this. On the flip side, you might be identifying some things of who is definitely not your ideal audience. And those could be some really great things to write down too. 
because it'll help you kind of um, avoid some of those instances that you might run into. So identifying who your ideal audience is and who your ideal audience is not, two really, really good things to touch on. Write them down, know who they are. And then once you start like talking to them, um, you're gonna be in a good place. Woo, okay, pulse check. How are we doing? Um, and I know that was a ton and ton of information. Gabby, is there anything over in the chat box? Um, questions? Um, yeah, so how do you figure out how big the market is? Yeah, so um, for example, um, I am helping somebody right now that is um, launching a wine and whiskey bar in her city, right? So we had to identify who is actually showing up um, in her, in the, vicinity of where her um where her wine and whiskey bar is going to be and if she is saying it's going to be between 25 to 45 age range of women um who make over seventy thousand dollars a year so that's who her ideal audience is um and she could niche it down even more to like um you know people who like wine or whatever but um she literally did a Google search of like the census in her city and put those, um, put those statistics in her business plan of where they are. Under you can, I know it sounds silly and almost a little too simple, but Google it. If you get so like niche down into who your target market is, there are statistics and, and data on pretty much every market out there. Whenever we were first um, starting Forward Female, we really did a deep dive search on how many entrepreneurs were in Los Angeles, um, how many women were in Los Angeles, um, and uh, how many, uh, I think, like uh, in the college space, who we thought our ideal audience was at the very beginning, but it changed drastically, um, how many women were studying business and entrepreneurship in schools in Los Angeles. So those type of things we were lo really looking at to say, okay, is what does the market actually look like? And is it feasible to attach to? Gabby, anything else? Um, no. Awesome. Okay. Well, it seems like we're doing good. I know we're going through a lot of information and I hope that you're taking really good notes. Um, and we'll, I'll open it up for questions at the end um, for more specific for your businesses. Cool. All righty. So this is where we really get into the meat and potatoes of your business plan. So understanding what the objectives are of what you're trying to reach. The two ways to look at this are your operational objectives and your financial, ooh, scary financial money, um, objectives of what you're trying um, to accomplish within your business. This is the what um, you're trying to accomplish in very, very specific terms. Um, and then we go into after this, the tactics of the how. So don't try to like, explain how you're going to achieve the objective here. Just explain what the objective actually is operationally um, and financially. Operationally, um, uh, I'm reading what you're reading, especially measurable. Consider these objectives of what the destination of where your business is going. Below, you'll start to explain the how of getting there. The financial objectives are the measurable ob objectives. I ask this a lot of my clients of how much money do you wanna make? And that always, almost always is the most daunting question ever because you don't know if that's too much money to ask for, you don't know if that's too much, little money to ask for or even imagine, but you have to start somewhere understanding how much financially you're trying to reach. We're trying to be a $100,000 company in year one, growing by 20% every year. That's a good financial objective if that's something to get you started. Cool. Alrighty. So the tactics, those are the how. That's the 
that's our objective and this is how we're going to achieve it. What you're showing people and yourself here is that you can identify a goal and you can identify how to achieve it. You need to say, what are the smaller portions, the smaller chunks out of that apple that I need to take in order to accomplish that goal? Be very descriptive within these um, because that's what's going to help you set up for success. Beyond like understanding how, then you put your execution plan into place of like, when are you going to do those things? And then you will get them done. But taking it step by step is important. Um, questions to ask yourself. Okay, so how are you going to increase your monthly product sales? How are you going to continue to grow your business? How are you going to reach those big financial goals that you have? How are you going to grow your business on an operational level? Are you going to grow your team? How are you going to grow your team? What's going to be the best way to do it? What you put in place here is um, likely going to change. I'll just, I'll just let you know now. And that's totally okay. But you have to have some kind of plan in place to get started. Otherwise, you are going to be completely overwhelmed and not know what to do. And things are going to be running around in your head if you're just a solo entrepreneur. And if you don't have tactics in place, the likeliness of somebody investing in you, money, low, super, super low. They want to know that you know how to get their money back. So some examples. Um, I want to increase my website um, shopping cart conversions to at least 400 per month by August. I'm going to increase my website traffic to at least 10,000 unique visitors per month by August. I'm going to add a new service to my offerings in March. I'm gonna hire an agency to help with social media. Tactics. All right, likely a lot of you started here whenever you were building your business plan. All right, I'm gonna have a business. What am I gonna offer? What does it look like? Why, where, right? Before you did any of that other stuff, that like feeling stuff. But this is typically where your products and services are a little bit deeper in your business plan. So whenever you're thinking about it, whether you're a product-based company or you're a service-based company, or maybe a little bit of both, um, you can have both of these incorporated in your business plan. So questions to ask yourself, what exactly are you offering? Feel free to like include like a description of what it is, how it works. Why are you offering it? What's the purpose? Making sure that you're not just putting an offering out there just to have it, but it has a real purpose and a real need. Where are you gonna be hosting the service? Right? Is it a location? Is it online? Are you an e-commerce brand? Are you gonna be holding on on Zoom? Are you going to clients' houses? Who, right? You can have like an overall arching ideal audience. Um, but you, but not all of your services have to, if you're a service-based or product-based, have to um, niche into just that ideal audience. You can kind of have like different ideal audiences within your overarching ideal audience. So entrepreneurs, but entrepreneurs that are looking to hone in on growing their social media. If you're like a social media agency. That's one of our services. So all of our clients might not need that particular service, social media management, but we know typically there are some that do. So we're going to hone in our messaging to them. And then how much are you going to charge for this service? I know that's a hard question too, right? Is it too much? Is it too little, Priscilla? How do I price my services? That's a whole nother conversation, but just start somewhere. And then once you get into the financials, you'll probably figure out if you're if it's too low is really what we find out at the end of the day. And it's fun. We wanna be Kim K just throwing money, like it's nothing. 
Um, so you got to hone in on your financials, massively important. And this is typically what takes the most time, I would say. So understanding these three things, whenever you're, if you're starting your business, you have to understand what your startup costs are going to be. Typically, whenever you're starting a business, um, you'll have you know, more startup costs just to get you up and going. Um, so understanding what that needs to be. So how much money you really need in order to start your business um, and what your runway would need before you like start making money. So your runway is like how much it's going to cost you month over month with your startup cost um, in order to turn a profitability at some point. You need to understand what your business's budget is, not if somebody gives you money, amazing to start your business, but have a budget in place so you know exactly how to use it. They're going to want to see this too, that you that they know exactly where every cent of their money is going and that it's going in a smart way to support your tactics and your objectives and that you're running a lean, mean business and not just like, um, you know, spending money to spend it type of thing. Understanding your operating cost. How much does it take to run your business on a monthly, a quarterly, and a yearly basis? It costs money to run a business. It's not all about you just like, <laughs> you just sell this product and you get all of that money back. That's not really how it works. Um, so you have to, there's an operational cost to your business and you have to understand what that is. Are you in brick and mortar? Do you have a rent? Um, do you have insurance? Do you pay for your email services? Do you pay for Facebook ads? Do you pay for Zoom? <laughs> All of these are operating costs within your business that add up and you have to understand what those are. And that'll help you identify how much your services or your products should be as well. And then you get into the revenue projector projections, understanding what are your revenue streams um, and, uh, and how much can you feasibly take on, especially if you're a service-based business, like what do you need to price your um, products, your services at in order to reach your financial objectives as well. Alrighty, marketing. Marketing is really one of my favorite topics to talk about. We lead so many workshops on marketing because um, that's where I came from. But um, there's a lot of different ways that you can build a marketing strategy. I please do not put that your marketing strategy is to just post on Instagram. That is not a marketing strategy. It's a part of it mainly, maybe, but it's not like a complete strategy. You have to look at it kind of zoomed out. We can't zoom all the way into understanding, okay, um, so I wanna make uh, $500,000, Priscilla, and I'm gonna get my leads by just like posting on Instagram. No, um, that is typically not gonna be a super strong strategy, although I think it's an important element of your strategy, showing up consistently and building an audience. But here are some other things that you can think about. Social media, but where on social media? Is it going to be Instagram? Is it going to be LinkedIn? Is it going to be Pinterest? Um, are you going to do paid media? Are you going to pay to um, be featured in a magazine? Are you going to pay for a billboard? Um, are you going to um, pay for Facebook and Instagram ads, which is different than just using social media at its free capacity? Blogging, are you going to try to build some of your SEO so Google can recognize when somebody um, searches the best stylist in the world? Email marketing, um, another really, really strong marketing strategy. How, but how are you going to build your email list? And then how are you going to deliver your promotions or your information to that email list? Email is a really great one because you own that audience. You don't own your audience on social media. Um, Pay-per-click, affiliate marketing, partnerships, influencer marketing. There's so many other ones. I typically break like a marketing strategy and a business plan into two, um, into digital marketing 
and non-digital marketing efforts. So maybe some of your non-digital marketing efforts are having flyers in like the car wash down the street. I don't know. Um, whatever it is for you, there should be a digital component and a non-digital component. I don't know why I didn't get a glass of water before this. I'm really regretting it now. But I know that was a lot of information. Um, and I wanna let you know that um, it's all feasible. And what you have to do is put this in place, set aside time to put your business plan in place and then start executing. Because the only people who don't fail, right? Failure, I think failure is like the best thing in the world. The goal is to actually fail and fail really fast. Um, so if people aren't failing, I don't think that you're trying. Um, and so try to fail, get out there and start doing because that's what it's all about. That means that you're learning. So here's a quick summary um, of everything that we talked about today. So, um, and I promise the Q&A is coming at the end and I can, um, whatever time is left, I will answer your specific business questions. Um, Remember, identify your, not your businesses, your core values. Once you get done with building your business plan, make sure that everything you've put into place feels good for that first, your core values, because that's the longevity factor to where you're not going to get burnt out. You're going to stay excited. You're going to stay motivated to actually continue doing your business. Your executive summary. So see what I mean? After you figured all of that other stuff out, maybe it's time to come back and write that executive summary that'll be at the very beginning of your business plan. Your mission and your vision, make sure those are super clear. Who is your target audience? Who is not your target audience at the end of the day? What are your objectives? And what are the tactics in order to accomplish those objectives? Financials, dig into those financials. Those should be robust. Those should be so clear to you first and foremost, and then you can hire out for a bookkeeper or an accountant or something like that. But I think you should know them first. And build your marketing strategy, both digital and non-digital. And execute. You can put the most gorgeous business plan on pen and paper. You can type it out, right? You can have it there. But if you don't execute, it's just going to sit there, right? and you're not going to reach all of those gorgeous goals that you have. You have to execute. It's 